Hey guys, it's Tom and welcome to episode 9 of my travel vlog series where I went to the Baltic countries and Finland. So I'm currently in Helsinki, Finland. It's my last full day here, which means that tomorrow I need to fly back home and get back to work. Who doesn't like going to work? <laughs> but anyway, that doesn't mean I still can't have my last bit of fun and explore as much of Helsinki today. If you missed out uh, yesterday's travel vlog, check out episode 8 where I went to the huge or more famous tourist spots here in Helsinki. But today I'm going to bring you to a bohemian suburb which is just to the northeast of Helsinki city centre. It's about a 35 minute walk from my hotel now. We're also going to check out some really cool markets, two of them in fact, and check out some street food. And I'm going to take you to an island just off the coast of Helsinki called Suomenlinna. It's really really popular to go to during this time of year, it's summertime. So I can't wait to take that little boat ride over to Suomenlinna and show you what it's all about. So let's get downstairs and start walking to our first destination. So I've been walking for about 30-35 minutes over the bridge from Helsinki Central and I've reached Kalio. Kalio is the Bohemian capital of Helsinki and right in front of me is Kaljon Kirko or Kalio Church. It's a Lutheran church that was built in 1912, made completely out of granite. Now it's got a lot of Art Nouveau style influences in its design so I can't wait to go inside, I can see the doors open. So let's take a look inside Kalio Church. Kalio is widely known as a place where you can come and find a lot of different types of shops in the sense of secondhand shops and quirky cafes, nice food places or vegan places to eat. But I actually wanted to come here for Hakanyami Market. Now, unfortunately, there's two types of Hakanyami Market. There's an older one, which is just across me, but it's closed off for renovation. And there's a new one right behind me. So let's go inside and see if we can grab something very small to eat. I'm still quite well, actually. So let's take a look at Hakanyami Market. So I felt like something a little bit sweet, so I got a tart and I asked the lady when I was ordering, I wanted something very local, very Finnish, and she said that it's seasoned now for rhubarb. So she pointed to me at the rhubarb tart, which is right here. Smells absolutely delicious. It's got a bit of cinnamon in it too. It costs four euros, a little bit dear, but hey. We're in Scandinavia, that's actually normal price here. So anyway, let's dig into our rhubarb tart. I'm always thinking rhubarb's red for some reason, but this one's a bit more of a green variety. So let's try it. Wow, 
quite sour. I was thinking it's going to be super sweet, but the pastry is really sweet already, and then the topping is quite sour, so it's actually pretty good. I think this will be nice with a really nice black coffee. Four euros right here in Hakanyami Market. Nice pastries, locally made. Try it when you're here. So I'm taking you now to Swam and Lena, which is the island just on the outside of Helsinki. Five euros return ticket, really, really cool, cheap, and we're gonna get on the boat now. It's gonna take about 15, 20 minutes to get there, and there's a ferry every 20 minutes until 2 a.m. So you can spend as long as you want there. So let's get onto our ferry. Welcome to Swam and Lena. I'm finally here and that ferry ride was a quick 15 minutes, super chilly and windy. So if you're coming down here, don't do the same mistake as me. I'm only wearing a t-shirt and shorts. Bring a sweater or a jumper or something because it's super windy at the moment and it's supposed to be summer. <laughs> but anyway, Swam and Lena is actually translate it from Finnish to English it means castle of Finland it's a huge fortress or a sea fortress that was used during the Swede and Russian era during the war and the Swedes actually built it so I can't wait to go around and explore it there's some museums there's places to eat you can literally spend a few hours here have a picnic a nice day trip let's get lost in Swamalina <laughs> I'm just inside here in the fortress area of Swam and Lena and I've just got to say there's about I think it's three islands all interconnected so that makes up Swam and Lena. Swam and Lena is part of Helsinki city, the boundary. It's kind of discovering the different nooks and crannies around here. I'm just inside 
kind of like a, the fortress walls where they were probably just looking out to see if anyone was coming to attack. So it's super interesting. As much as it's really sunny here, it's really cold. So make sure you've got that jacket because it's super windy. I keep on stopping to have coffee because I'm freezing cold. We're going to continue walking and we're going to get over and find that place where I'm going to show you a good view of Swamalina. Super, super windy. I'm not even sure if you can hear me properly, but I've got a great view of the Gulf of Finland right here. And we were just sailing there was it two days ago from Estonia. So I just wish I had a jacket. Luckily, I've got double hair spray on, so my hair is fine, I think. So anyway, let's continue walking around Swamalina. here in Swamalina and I'm really amazed. I love it here even though it's really windy but I can just imagine how amazing the sunset would be here. Bring a couple of drinks with you, have a picnic and watch the sunset. The last ferries at 2am anyway and the sunset's around 10-11pm so it's a really really good option if you just want to come down here, have a look at the Gulf of Finland, check the cruise ships coming in and out and have an amazing time. So Definitely going to this one, Alina. I just had to have an ice cream because from the tour I heard that the Finns eat a lot of ice cream and they actually, considering it's such a cold country during the winter time, 50% of the ice cream that they eat is actually eaten during the winter time which is funny and crazy. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to have a very Scandinavian flavour which is licorice and it's grey. So you're probably wondering why it's grey because it's licorice flavour and on the bottom I got dime. You've probably seen that ice cream or that chocolate in Ikea. But on the top it's the licorice flavour. I can't remember how they pronounce it. La Lacris or something like that. Two scoops cost me 5 euros 50 which is a bargain. This looks absolutely delicious. You're probably thinking oh my god what's that licorice flavour ice cream but for me it's absolutely beautiful. I feel like it's almost like their version of salted caramel. That's why I love it. So yum. And I was just told that I need to watch out for the seagulls who's gonna swoop, swoop down and eat my ice cream. So I need to eat my ice cream super quickly before these seagulls start chasing after me. So let's enjoy this. <laughs> So 
so it's time for dinner and it's my last night here in Helsinki, Finland and I wanted to of course have something very local. So I'm here at Cafe Engel which is just in front of the Helsinki Cathedral so you can't miss it. It's literally just across the road. You can get seats outside but it was full but they have a really cute courtyard here to relax and unwind for the day. So I am starting off with a salmon soup. The salmon soup is really really popular amongst the locals here and then I'm gonna have meatballs and mashed potatoes. I know that it's more well known in Sweden however they do have a really good version of the meatballs and mashed potatoes here so I can't wait to try it. I also selected Cafe Angle because it's pretty reasonable the prices. I had a look at some surrounding restaurants and a main course was 30 euro minimum and here I got a starter and a main course for 20 euro so I'm saving about half the amount of money here. <laughs> So it's time for our starter. I just got my salmon soup. So this is really, really famous here in Finland. A lot of people love having this and this was recommended to me by my friend. And I've seen nearly every shop offers salmon soup. So I was expecting something a lot more pink to resemble salmon, but it's not. It's actually got kind of like a creamy, no, I can't really tip it to show you guys, but it's got a creamy texture, bits of salmon in it, and it's got potato too. And it is covered in dill. And of course it comes on the side with their famous rye bread. Beautiful, I love this bread. So let's dive right into our salmon soup. That's beautiful. The salmon is just cooked perfectly. It goes really well with the potatoes, of course, and the dill. A lovely, lovely topping for this salmon soup and I can't wait to try it with the rye bread too. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. So my main course has arrived, the meatballs, they look absolutely beautiful. I was expecting small ones for some reason but maybe because of the finished version it's a huge one but that looks huge. I'm not going to finish this at all but just from smelling it, it smells super well seasoned. It's got some nice lingonberries on the side, which is very local here. Pickles and mashed potatoes. So let's take a bite into this. Gonna need to roll home like these meatballs later. This is a huge, huge portion. They look super moist. When I just cut into it, absolutely beautiful. It wasn't tough whatsoever. This is obviously very homemade. It's very, very fresh, so. Let's tuck into it. So I can see this has been seasoned really well. I'm curious to see what's inside it. Seasoning is perfect. I don't need to put any salt and pepper on it. So, so amazing, yummy. If only I was really, really hungry, I would finish this. And let's have a try the, the mash. Perfect, not too buttery. Just the way I like it. And let's try the meatballs with some of these lingonberries. It's supposed to be a match, so... So good. Such a Scandinavian flavour in there. I love it when they mix savoury with sweet. That lingonberry just really complements it really, really well. It doesn't overpower it whatsoever. Just make sure you just put a little bit, not too much lingonberries. Amazing. Let's dig in to our finished meatballs. Okay, so let's get right into things. My final thoughts about Helsinki, Finland. I can't believe that I've been here for two and a half days so far. And to be quite honest, my first impression when I got here after coming from Tallinn, I kind of wasn't really disappointed, but maybe it's where my hotel is, where the buildings aren't as pretty as in Tallinn. But I was kind of worried in a way of, oh my god, um, this is Helsinki. I was expecting it to be a lot more picturesque. One thing I realized about Helsinki, and this actually goes for some of the other Scandinavian countries too, it's that 
it's not really about the buildings and the architecture. It's more about the people. The people is what makes Helsinki and Finland what it is today, your interactions with them. And they are so, so friendly. Every single place I went to, they were consistently friendly, consistently trying to help me out, helping other tourists out. I had a problem with my SIM card today, and this lady helped me so much setting up my plan because I just needed data for another day. By the way, remember in episode one, I bought that SIM card in Frankfurt for six gig. That is completely not worth it. I ran out of gig yesterday, uh, mainly because two of the ho two out of the four hotels I stayed in, the Wi-Fi was really, really bad, including this one right here. It doesn't even reach my bed. If I want to use the Wi-Fi, I need to go to the door and stand next to it, and I can't really do that all the time, you know, so I had to keep on using my data. So anyway, I ran out of six gigs in eight days, so today I had to go and buy a SIM card. Five euros here in Helsinki, and you get unlimited data for 89 cents per day, so I only needed it for today. So I was online the whole time, video calling everyone that I knew to show them Helsinki. So anyway, yeah, super, super friendly people. That's one of the top things about Helsinki and Finland. Also, as I mentioned before, you need to warm up to Helsinki. That's why you need a good three days to really understand the culture and understand the beauty of Helsinki. Helsinki is not one of those cities that's just going to blow your face and blow your mind and be like, oh my god, this is so beautiful and pretty. Yes, it is beautiful and pretty in certain parts, but you need to actually go out and explore it yourself. Go out, get lost in the suburbs, don't just stay in the central area. You need to go out and make sure your three-day stay is what you expected it to be. You can't just wait things to come to you. Also, one other thing is be careful with timings. Daylight is really deceiving here and it gets really dark 10, 11 p.m. So there I am, strolling, enjoying the environment, the atmosphere. Look at my watch. Panic mode, 6.37 p.m. and everything's closing at 6. So I couldn't bring you to an amazing place for street food, which was the Market Square or the Market Hall, which is next to Market Square at the pier. You can get some really, really amazing local street food there and actually wanted to go there for dinner. One tip for you, be super, super careful with timings. Take note. Don't just wait for the sun to come down because it'll be down at 11 p.m. Because I mentioned before that it is a little bit dear because this is a Scandinavian country, you need to shop around for everything. Shop around for souvenirs, shop around for food. Now, it's a given that anything in the central area, the touristy area, is going to be very expensive or even double the price. But once you go out a little bit, you will see souvenir shops, you will see restaurants. Like the restaurant I went to today, I was really surprised because that is in the central area, Cafe Angle. But I got a that huge portion of the meat meatballs was only 12 euros I think and in the restaurant next door to it that I originally wanted to go to that would cost a good 25 to 30 euros so don't be scared to shop around make sure you check all the restaurant prices make sure it's something that you want to eat but that's what you need to do in Helsinki to get ahead save that extra bit of money but still make the most of your experience. Another thing is that it is a little bit cheaper than Norway and Sweden here in Finland. Just buy two, one, two, three euros here and there when it comes to everyday items like drinks. Norway and Sweden are a little bit more dear in that aspect. So Finland, just a tad bit cheaper. One last point I'd like to mention for you guys is Helsinki. I felt very safe here. I, I think in the three days I was here, I bumped into maybe two homeless people and they were just sitting at the entrances of churches that I went into just asking for coins. I hardly saw anyone that was rowdy or loud. I mean, I wasn't here on a weekend. I heard that on weekends there are some people that get a little bit too happy after a few drinks. So be mindful of that on weekends. But I was here on weekdays and I felt completely safe. I was holding my camera and my phone everywhere. So when it comes to crime, I didn't feel it. However, I did feel unsafe around those seagulls they swoop down so quickly and I've seen a lot of people and their food has been stolen right out of their hands today. I bought my ice cream and the lady told me, be careful with your ice cream, there are seagulls everywhere. So I stood right next to the wall, I leaned against the wall eating my ice cream because I didn't want to share my ice cream with a seagull. <laughs> Yeah, so very safe here in Helsinki, but you will only feel unsafe with the seagulls at the port area.
areas. Helsinki. Wow, I love Helsinki. I'm happy that I ticked another Scandinavian country off my list. I think I have one left. So hopefully sometime in the future I'll get to go there. What did you guys think of the video today? Swam and Lena is beautiful. I was very happy I got to go there. I never even planned that trip to go to Swam and Lena. Oh my god, I got a bit of a tan. <laughs> that is super bad. I'm just noticing it now. Don't be scared to walk around different suburbs like Kalia today that we went to this morning, the kind of hipster bohemian suburb that's pretty cool. It's more lively at night and it's also the sauna capital here in Helsinki so if you want to have a sauna and if you want to go and get some drinks, some nice bars, go there in the evenings in Kalia because I went there in the morning so <laughs> I'm not too much of a fan of going out so that's why I prefer to do things during the day and sleep at night. Thank you for watching this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends if they're heading over to Helsinki also check out my channel there might be a few other videos that you're interested in and I can give you some tips and some destinations that you might be heading to not only in Europe but around the world too it's part of my job and and subscribe if you enjoy these types of travel vlogs kind of like music video style travel vlogs with my own opinions in it <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get some sleep because I need to fly back home tomorrow and get to work. Thank you for watching these videos. If you haven't watched episodes one to eight in this series, there's a link popping up on your screen now. So if you want to check out my whole Baltic countries tour. So I did four countries in all. I did Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Finland. Please start from episode one and you'll get back here and then you can watch the next part part of this video. Until our next vlog, have a good night, always take care, be happy, and I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so I've made it to the central station. I just walked 15 minutes from my hotel in the city. I'm taking the train to the airport. It costs four euros 60, so that's actually pretty much a bargain for one way. So now we're gonna check where, which platform we need to get to to the airport. It's a circular track apparently, so most of them will go past the airport. So we just need to double check and let's get ourselves to Helsinki International. So we've just arrived here at the airport. It takes about 20-25 minutes to get to Helsinki International from the city. And um, like I said, 4 euros 60, super expensive, fast train, clean train, 20-25 minutes. And there's a train every 10 minutes in case you missed one. So don't worry too much if you miss the first one because there's another one after 10-15 minutes. Okay, I'm on standby for my flight. Fingers crossed I get on and I'll talk to you then. So I've made it to Frankfurt, about to board my flight back home. I just wanted to say a big thank you if you've watched all of these episodes. I hope it inspires you to get out in the world, explore it as much as you can, discover the unknown, go somewhere completely different, even if you're by yourself, just like what I did. If I can do it, you can do it too. I've got another adventure up my sleeve in the next month, so I hope you stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, always take care, keep on exploring, and I'll see you in the next vlog.